Hi guys, quick announcement before the video actually starts. I will be taking Drawing Your OC's submissions for next weekend's video. So, if you would like to enter, make sure you go on Instagram, upload an image of your OC with a face reference and an outfit reference. And if you don't feel comfortable drawing clothes, then just take pictures from the internet of clothes that your character would wear. Finally, make sure you include a backstory as well. I want to know the story behind the OC before I draw them. Lastly, ensure that you use hashtag Jenna draw on my OC, otherwise I won't be able to see your submission. Hi guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's video, I'm actually going to be drawing something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about doing landscape paintings or paintings with buildings or nature and scenery when you're not quite so used to doing paintings of that kind. Um, if any of you are like me, you'll draw a lot of characters and a lot of people and not much else and I've realised as I've gotten older that um, to be a better artist I need to branch out into more things, uh, whether that be through photo studies so you understand how the word world actually looks like before you start painting it or through um, Going to my classes at uni, I've realised um, if I do want to go into concept art, which I'm still not entirely sure about because part of me does want to be a 3D animator, but if I do end up going into concept art, I need to be better at doing landscape paintings. So in class at the moment, we're learning how to paint a city street, so obviously we're doing quite a lot on perspective and everything. And we also have to paint in Photoshop and Photoshop is my worst enemy for painting in. I don't know why, but I've never been able to paint in Photoshop and I've always found it so difficult. So I was messing around with the brush settings today and I managed to get it looking a lot better than I usually would painting in Photoshop. Um, Cause usually I can't even blend colors together, but I was blending colors together all right. So I thought, you know what, as a quick little practice, I'm gonna do a painting for myself, for fun, of like a little fantasy uh, scene of a little house in the middle of the woods. But um, as I was going with this painting, something was really bothering me about it. Um, the fact that um, a lot of the colours are cool toned and I didn't really like how dark and scary it kind of looked. I'd say that I wanted the house to look more inviting and it wasn't giving me that kind of vibe yet. So while I was painting, I was trying to think of ways I could go about this and I realised I could just change the colour balance. So that was one of my top tips for you guys. Um, in Photoshop, if you change the colour balance of an image, it can really change the feeling of the image. Um, a lot of colour, I mean you can do a lot with colour to portray a certain mood and that's definitely one of my top tips. I wanted that house to look really warm and inviting while the trees maintain this kind of bluish tone but I also wanted to kind of lead your eyes in the direction of the house because when you first look at the image, well hopefully, you should first notice the massive tree at the front and as you follow that tree you end up looking at the house. Um, I've forgotten what it's called in it's not a line of action, I'm thinking of something else. But um, in a drawing when you have things pointing towards your central focal point, there is a word for it I feel like, but I can't remember it. <laughs> I was trying to do that, I didn't do an amazing job at it in the right hand corner, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I actually did this on a stream, so if by any chance you want to watch the stream, I will have it linked in the description. So my favourite part of doing this was definitely doing the lights in the house and the little lantern because then I added like glowing effects over them and made them look a little bit more inviting and it was all very interesting. I think it is very much a thing of you have to practice and play around with it to get good at it because obviously I don't do landscape paintings and I find it so difficult. So I'm actually very proud of this piece. I may look at this in a year's time when I have been practicing landscape paintings and think, oh god, that was awful. But um, but that's the good thing about improvement and stuff like that. You will get better as time goes on. So 
my whole point of this video really is just to tell you guys um, don't stop yourself from painting something or drawing something just because you have this mental block in your mind telling you oh I'm not good at drawing that I'm just going to avoid drawing it entirely because for the longest time that's exactly what I was doing and by doing that I was holding myself back as an artist and I wasn't getting better in general I was only getting better at one thing so um yeah and i did actually go to one of my friends for a critique about this point in the image halfway through because the good thing about going to a university where everyone is doing the same course uh we're all doing like 3d and 2d animation um everyone's also artists so i can ask people for critiques and they're quite happy to give me critiques so my friend told me um, it looks a bit weird where the tree was intercepting the house because I looked like it looked like I was trying to f paint the details of the house but the tree kept getting in the way. So I started by painting the details of the house and then I added the tree back over again so it wouldn't look so weird. So this is me just trying to work out how to paint that window and then trying to make the house more interesting I added the kind of like Tudor um, wood wood panel bits that go across the house like that um, just to make it a little bit more interesting and it was at this point in the image I decided that this house and this little scenery area would be the perfect um, location for one of my original characters in my comic so I've decided that this can be part of the concept art towards my comic and this is the house of Elvira the witch because it works quite well for her because um, she's not a bad witch, she's a good witch so it makes sense that she'll live in somewhere quite cosy and inviting looking um, and the one thing at this point that was bothering me a little bit was all that blue in the background behind the tree because it looks like there's just a line of trees and then it just stops and there's no more forest or anything like that so the way I actually combated that, I don't do it yet in the painting, but the way I went about that was I added a multiply layer with some very faint trees in the background because um, one of the things I learned while doing this and watching lots of videos on doing paintings, landscape paintings, is that your foreground, um, the things in the foreground need to be the darkest and the things nearer to the background need to be brighter. Uh, also ignore what I was going up there. It was another painting that I was thinking of doing for a video. Um, so I then made it grayscale to check that all my values were correct. Um, it's very useful to about halfway for an image to turn it into a grayscale image because then you can see um, have I got the lightest colours I could get or the darkest colours I can get. And if you haven't got enough of a colour range then you can go and alter that afterwards. And I would say one of the good things about digital art is that it's so easy to just change the colour balance of things and it's so easy to add more contrast or more brightness or darkness into your image. Um, and I'd say in that way, in that regard, it is a little easier than if I was doing this as an oil painting. Um, so I did actually add more contrast here because I wanted it to um, have more of a divide between the darker trees in the foreground and in the background. Then this is me adding some trees in the background just so um, it gives more of a, a look of having um, more scenery. And then this is when I was playing with the liquify tool in Photoshop. Um, I was trying to work out any way I could m manipulate the image to make it a little bit more interesting. I then made it like that and distorted the perspective of the house a little bit. But then I thought, hmm, actually that looks a bit too weird. Because um, although it's fantasy and I wanted the house to look a bit weird, I didn't want it to look too out of perspective. I quite liked that little window in the corner by the door that is slightly slanted, but I didn't want it to um, be too much, too, um, what's the word, out of proportion, yeah. So I ended up going with just changing the size of the house a bit and making the size of the house smaller so it looks more in the background and I'm actually a lot happier with how it looks after I made that decision. And then I was painting another bit of a tree in the background just so we can have uh, more trees going on on that side. Um, I was a bit lazy when it came to the grass. I just kind of added a few little grass bits here and there. 
um, but by this point in the image I was pretty happy with how it was all looking. I still wanted it to remain somewhat sketchy, but yeah. Um, so just to recap, my top tips for this is definitely to change the colour balance as you're going. Um, definitely do a few layout concept sketches before you start. Uh, playing with different compositions will definitely help you get a final image that you really like. I was looking at trees that gave me the inspiration for this image actually. I'll put a, tr a tree picture on screen that will show you the inspiration I got for um, the trees I've painted here that go swooping across and then um, make a sort of like archway towards the house. And there we go, there's the comparison between uh, the house when I sketched it and the house when I'm finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more landscape paintings, I'll be more than happy to post them because I'm practicing them all the time. Bye guys!